you know, you're working at Tommy Boy now. You get assigned to De La, you don't sign them. Uh, right. So while you're working on that album, who else are you looking at scoping in the scene when you're thinking about people you want to bring to the table at Tommy Boy? Well, I was thinking about the flavor unit because um, cause 45 King had all these promos on Red Alert that were um, phenomenal. Cool, 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 DJ Red Alert with the 45 King. And a bunch of them became records, including this Cuts Got Flavor. Um, and, and I just, um, I thought 45 King's production was next level. Um, so, so I'd always wanted to try to do something with him. And coincidentally, he literally walked up to me at the Latin Quarter. And um, he, I, it was so weird because there's no internet back then. But he totally knew who I was. Huh. Um, which, which I guess wasn't that weird because it was like, Two white people in the Latin Quarter, me fucking climb, maybe search. So, so, um, and he he was like, "Yo, you Dante Ross?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he bugged me out because he he didn't look like he should be at the Latin Quarter. He was like nice. He was like a friendly yeah. guy, like no jewels, wasn't like thugged out. Yeah, had like a he had like a little Jerry Curl kind of like not Jerry Curl, but like. He had some roots and berries in the hair, and, and, and he had some big he he had some big ass headphones around his neck, like almost studio headphones. Yeah. And he was like, "Yo, you want to hear some joints?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he pulled out a he literally pulled out a Walkman and had he used to put you know the the marking tape like with letters on it. Yeah. He said "45 King" on his, wow. on his Walkman. I was like, "Yo, who is this guy?" Like and like a said, homemade label maker kind of situation. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah, you know the round gun thing. Yeah, and I was like, "This guy is unbelievable." Like, who is this guy? <laughs> He's such such an oddball in in the best of ways. And he played me all the shit that I thought was phenomenal. And I was like, "Yo, you need to come come to Tommy Boy and come play me joints." And he um he called me. Like, that was a Friday. He called me, I think it was Monday, and it was him and Fat Five Freddy, who was like my, my old school boy. Yeah. Um, um, he, later on, we, we wouldn't be as tight, but, but we were at that point, we were friends. And um, um, they played me Wrath of My Madness over the phone, mm -hmm. amongst other songs, and it really stood out. And I was listening on my speaker phone, I think, in my shitty office. And I was like, this is incredible. You need to come bring everyone to my office. That's what I told him. <laughs> bring the flavor unit to my office, kid. So he, he, um, he came to the office, I think it was two days later, with an assortment of flavor unit uh, members. I believe it was Lati, Lakim Shabazz, Marky Fresh, who I don't think was ever an official member, 45 King and Latifa, possibly Apache. Mm -hmm. I think Apache, too. Um, and maybe Lati wasn't there. One of them wasn't there. So he proceeded to play me uh, songs by them, and, and, and they were all cool. And then he, at the second or third song was Wrath of My... I said, yo, play the girl, though. Play the girl. She was there. Mm -hmm. and, and the other thing was she was so fresh-faced and smiley, and she was How really... How old do you think she was around that She time? was in high school. She was a senior high wow. school. Wow. And she was really cool. And she dressed really cool. She had, like, a, like a dashiki top on and some, like, sweats. Oh. I mean, some shorts. And like some floppy socks and some kicks. She like looked really cool. Her she yeah. had the the bob and you know, her whole shit was fly. And um so so she I was like, Oh play play me her shit. And they played me and it it blew me away. I rang the lesson of today. You have to listen to each and every single word I have to say because the ruler Lord Ramsey is on my side and I'm the princess of the posse. So yo, take it light. And, um, Monica Lynch was in the, in her office, which is adjacent to the room. And she came in. She's like, Dante, come in my office. She's like, we have to sign her. And I was like, yeah, mm. we really do. So she gave me the green light right there. And I literally told her, like, we want to give you a record deal. And she was like, okay, cool. And her, <laughs> law, her lawyer was Richard Grable. And I remember that after we had the meeting, we went down to this park uh, off, off uh, East River. And we, we shot some basketball. And she was a high school basketball player, which was cool, um, which gave me, like, another look into her life and huh. she was um really cool and we smoked a bunch of weed a bunch of bur dirt <laughs> weed and, and we hung out and one of them knew my man Tahid, who who i used to run the streets with he lived in jersey he was from jersey city or newark and he knew them so we had some people in common too which was cool we found that out when we were hanging out um and from there 
we did the deal. It was a, a relatively cheap deal, singles deal, and the rest you could say is history. She she um, was off to the races. That record, mm -hmm. we got the test pressing during New Music Seminar, and I walked around and gave test pressings of the 12-inch to people, and Red Alert, like literally, I gave him that record, and he played that shit the next day on air on his midday mix show, or maybe it was the five o'clock mix show. It was, one, it was a midday mix show, I believe. He played it, and he he played it and cut it back and forth and played it. And then I, there was a party at a club called MK that night, and I went to the party and he was rocking it. And I was like, "Oh mm -hmm. shit!" He was like, "Yo!" And he was pointing out, he's like, "This one, this one's rocking." And so I knew I had Word. had a song. And that's that's wrapped in my madness. Yeah, and you know it's that meter okay. sample. And that's I think that's maybe why I like the record too, because it was you know I was always like trying to identify samples. And I knew that sample right away, Chicken Scratch. I was like, oh, that's the meters. That shit's dope as hell. My mellow lots, he was kicking flavors. The Ari Bossy said, yo, lots people, we can do this. So I paused into the thought, then my brilliance I caught, and I agree, because I already knew this. Um, because my pops was a meters fan. So, so, um, I just, it was, it was on from there, you know. Thanks for watching that. And if you dug that, leave a thumbs up and say what up in the comments. And make sure to subscribe to Stony Island Audio, Stony Island Audio. for more.